Monday, April the 3rd, 2017 at uh, 9 a.m. in Council Chambers. Um, we, we do not have any introduction of late items. Okay, so we need a motion, please, that the Committee of the Whole Agenda be adopted. Councillor Rhodes, Councillor Youngberg, all in favour? Thank you very much. So our delegation today is from the Desert Valley Hospice Society, and we have the president, Ken Clark, uh, who I believe is a relative because we have the same last name, so and spelt the same way, and both from Ireland. So we've discussed this before. We're probably related somehow. <laughs> and Donna Kelso, who is also involved with, uh, with this and does a lot of work. So uh, they have asked to come and make a community presentation. So welcome to both of you. Would you come up to the microphone, and, um, and Brianne will advance the slides as you get going. Thank you for coming. Well, Member Court of Council, thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning to share with you and to represent the Valley Hospital Society. I want you to know up front that we're not here to issue a concern, a complaint, or to ask for anything. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> These next few moments for you as community leaders are about awareness. If you look up at the screen, uh, all the words on the screen have something in common. They all speak of the palliative journey. And I'd just like to pause at this point in the presentation and ask, when you hear the word palliative or hospice, what's the first thought that comes to mind? Death. Death. Someone's going to die, someone's going to die uh, soon. That's the, often that's the, the response we get when we ask that kind of question. But often such thoughts are accompanied by feelings of uncertainty, sadness, and fear. Feeling vulnerable, and at times overwhelmed by what faces you. And this is where we as a hospice society meet the people of Asuyus and the South Okanagan. Right at that intersection of fear and uncertainty. Uh, we want you as you serve as municipal leaders to be aware, to be aware of the palliative approach to care for those who are dealing with a life-limiting or terminal illness and to also be aware of the work of the society, who we are, what we do, and how we can partner together to meet the needs of those on this journey. So as we enter into this discussion, there is often some confusion regarding terminology. Uh, palliative care, end-of-life care, and final days all speak of the palliative journey. And the terms are sometimes used interchangeably but each has its own distinction that defines what's happening at different stages of the journey. Palliative care may happen as soon as a life-limiting, life-threatening diagnosis is received. The palliative approach to care involves symptom management, accessing of community supports, and maximizing the quality of life for the client and for their family or caregivers. End-of-life care follows when the patient has weeks or months to live. Uh, medical treatments are ongoing at this point in the journey, and hospice care may be appropriate. And in the final days, symptom control and social, social support for the patient and their family is of paramount importance. Hospice palliative care aims to relieve suffering and improve the quality of living and dying by helping people with life-limiting and terminal illnesses live as comfortably and fully as possible, regardless of the setting. Hospice palliative care helps patients and their families to address physical, psychological, social, spiritual, and practical issues, and their expectations, their needs, their hopes, and their fears. It helps prepare for and embrace the dying process. If you look at the screen, at, at some point in the journey, there is this shift from active treatment to comfort care. Treatment of uh, symptoms and pain management is still a priority, but as the illness progresses, there is more of a focus on comfort and support. And it's during this time that healthcare providers, our health authority, our community groups and organizations must work together to create and deliver an effective system of end of life services that are both well planned and well coordinated. And this is what we advocate for as a hospice society. The focus is on quality of life, <coughs> on providing compassionate care and support, providing emotional, social, and spiritual support, preparing for the end of life, and addressing <coughs> loss, grief, during illness, and after death. And 
this is who we are. This is what we are about at Desert Valley Hospice Society. We support excellence in the delivery of hospice palliative care and end of life services. We define excellence as the ability for all individuals to live each day with comfort and dignity, pain free, surrounded by loved ones, in a setting of their choice. And the key words to our mission statement that you see on the screen are support and facilitate. Our focus is on our local communities here in the South Okanagan uh, to support good palliative care and end of life services in a more rural setting. Uh, we want to be an island of excellence right here in our communities. Along with the value we place on providing compassionate care and our community partnerships, we also value high ethical standards in the way we operate as a society, such as excellence in equality in standards of care, accountability, inclusiveness, transparency, and very importantly, confidentiality. If you think about the purpose of Desert Valley Hospice Society with us, if you think about our reason for being and doing what we do, providing support, encouragement, and practical assistance is the primary work of our staff, our trained volunteers, and helpers. We often think of hospice in terms of brick and mortar, a facility. But as we previously noted, the focus of hospice palliative care, the focus of Desert Valley Hospice Society, is to provide quality of life and care for clients and their families throughout the palliative journey. And we do this primarily through our volunteers and programs. Uh, there is still a need, and it's still part of our vision to continue to advocate for dedicated hospice space right here in our communities because the evidence clearly shows that those who are on the hospice path do better at the end of life. And so we will continue to be a voice for that within our communities. Another of our purposes is to promote public awareness. We educate about our services and our programs. We advocate with the health authority, local and provincial governments, for improvements to palliative and end of life care models with that focus on greater support within a more rural environment. And of course, to facilitate all the above, we have to secure and manage donations. Uh, Desert Valley Hospice Society, all of its programs and services are managed by a volunteer board of directors, and we are accountable to our membership and to our communities as well. To realize our vision, stay true to our mission, honor our values, and achieve long-term success, we need a strategy. And the image that you see on the screen here now illustrates the priority that is given to the society's programs and services and the supportive role that organization, fund development, and community engagement to play within our organization. In 2016, we updated our strategic plan, and you can see that our objectives align with our strategic focus, with an emphasis on developing and improving the services that we offer. We still need to pay attention to recruitment and development of our volunteers, staff, and directors. We still need to be a voice to advocate to enter into conversations and provide helpful resources. And of course, like any other organization that's a, a charitable organization, we still need to raise funds to sustain the work of the society. On the screen, you can see some of the programs that we offer. Most services are free of charge. There is a nominal fee for our day program, but that is dependent on the individual circumstances. And so you can see that we have a number of programs that we operate within our communities. And so as we come to you this morning, uh, how can you support the work of Desert Valley Hospice Society? You, know, you can do so by being aware, and that's what this morning was about, making you aware of who we are and what we do in the community. By being <coughs> a presence with the society at key events, and we have appreciated uh, Mayor McCord of being at our Hike for Hospice the last number of years, and we just appreciate the support that we have received uh, from you as a council as well. Uh, you can help us promote some of these events. You can become involved financially by your practical support, by the giving of your time. We always need trained volunteers to work with our clients and families and caregivers. We also need helpers either on a regular basis or an event-by-event -event basis, helping with administrative work or <coughs> more hands-on. And you can see from the bottom left of the diagram that we have been blessed with a variety of supporters in the community. And uh, the last slide that's going to come up here is an acknowledgement that uh, this presentation has been funded through our BC government, but we have been blessed by the support that we've received. 
from the Hospice Palliative Care Association, from the BC Center for Palliative Care, as well as the, uh, the Ministry of Health. So thank you for the opportunity to be with you this morning. If you do have any questions, we'd be happy to interact. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. And, and I, I, I'm still sort of learning about this uh, whole hospice, palliative care, they, and I think you guys do an amazing job, and you've had a few fundraisers and so on that I've been, that I've, uh, uh, been involved in. You know, when I, somebody said, well, there's quite a difference between palliative care and hospice care, so I went, you know, typed it into Google and tried to figure it out, but to me, it sounds like it's kind of a transition from one to the other. Is that correct? Yeah. It's, is there, or are there two separate programs for palliative and then hospice? We, we often use those terms interchangeably, and uh, as we had illustrated on the, one of the earlier diagrams, there is a progression, yeah. there is a journey through the palliative pro process, and hospice does tend to come in a little bit later in the journey. Sure. Uh, we try to connect with people early in the, their diagnosis and be able to come alongside of them. Hospice care tends to come along a little bit later uh, in the journey. Well, I, I do know that this, that this program works extremely well because a very good friend of mine died two months ago, and I do know that the palliative care program kicked in and he was able to, um, to die at home very comfortably with uh, services and, and support staff. So I really appreciate um, what, uh, what you're, you're all doing. So I'm going to see if anybody on council, uh, Councillor Campbell, you're Thank first. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. First off, <clears throat> what, a, what an excellent presentation um, and the way you started it off I think with the question you asked was very very valid <clears throat> it's an uncomfortable topic for a lot of people and, and because it's uncomfortable people are reluctant to delve in to try to understand it so uh, thank you for that and great job doing that and um, this will be on Granica so hopefully people will see it I hope our friends in the media um, can, can help uh, make people understand this a little better and with that understanding and the importance of what you do um, will hopefully lead to some additional fundraising so thank you in response to your question oh. can I ask something yet? Sure. sure we have a program coming up on April the 19th it's called Hello it's going to be held at the Assyria Senior Center it's uh, from noon till 2.30 it starts off with a free lunch <laughs> and then they have an interactive card game. It's called Hello. And in this card game, you sit around a table with a small group, and these cards ask you different questions about you know, what plans you've made for your future. Uh, one of the questions that kind of touched me, I went online and watched some of it this morning, and one of them was, if you knew that you were dying, who have you not spoken to in the last six months mm -hmm. that you would like to talk to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a good one. Apparently, when they do this, mm -hmm. it starts off everybody's kind of hesitant and mm -hmm. intimidated, but as they get into it and they all start sharing with one another, they all begin to open up. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Councillor Rhodes? Thank you, Member Clough. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, uh, always great to hear some of the work that you're doing. and. Um, end of life experiences touch everyone in our community in fact everyone in life at one point or another and the first thing that usually kicks in for families and individuals is confusion and panic and stress and all that kind of stuff and your program really does help people organize the various stages that they're going to go through over a whatever period of time it is so um, I don't really have much else to say other than thank you very much and way to go. Mm -hmm. You guys do a wonderful job in our community. We train our volunteers to be that calming presence when yeah. they come into mm -hmm. these situations. Mm -hmm. and that's, uh, that's helpful for the client as well as the family. Absolutely. <coughs> Councillor King. The program that we Sorry. started is our supportive care program. It's a day program at our supportive care center. And it's for people who are facing that condition in the fear. They can meet together with people who are going through the same thing that they are. And they just have a time to, they can be, family members can go if they wish, or <coughs> the client can go by themselves, oh. and they can share with one another. They come about 10 o'clock in the morning, they stay for lunch, they're there till about 2.30, 3 o'clock, depending on how they're feeling. But they have sharing time, they have, the, there's uh, 
palliative massage available if, if they would like mm -hmm. that. Um, one of the clients that they had a while ago had difficulty bathing, so they have a walk-in shower. We have a care uh, aid there <coughs> that helped him with his bathing. And mm -hmm. so there's a lot of, they just have quiet time. They can, there's a library, they can take out books, they can watch movies. Mm. Good. Uh, Councillor King, then yeah, Councillor Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm asking about the free lunch, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just no want to thank thing. you both very much. A great presentation and very informative, and hopefully the newspapers will pick up on it. Do you have a date set for your walk? I know I've been involved volunteering the last few years. Mm -hmm. It's May the 7th. Thank you. Unfortunately, this year um, we have a lot of people who are going to be away, and so we're not able to have it in the series this okay. year. So we're going back to combining it in all of our this year. This year only, we're going to be back next year. I'd so like to let you sure know <laughs> your path where you have to walk has been paved now. It's a beautiful walkway. I, I was looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. So it's combined with walk with your doc, isn't it? Well, They're actually, both on the same day. I talking to you on Friday. I looked that up because I had never heard of that before. Yeah. And the walk with your doc is at the community center and it starts at 1 30. Our walk is at Lions Park starting at 12 30. Oh dear. And, and it's both in the same town. Yes. Oh dear. Is I mean it would it's unfortunate that it, it couldn't be combined. Much. Yes. So maybe oh. this is the first time they've done that in Oliver. Mm. And so maybe if they They did they have walk with their doc be with your doc before. They have had it according to yeah. Petra. Yeah. Oh, really? they, they haven't had it down here, but no, I've never oh, heard of it well that is isn't that that's too bad? It like is. you but know, it starts earlier, and we have a barbecue lunch. So <laughs> they can come and do five teas with us, and then they can go there and walk. Okay, the well, fair <laughs> enough. If they're out walking, they can do both. The hike for hospice is a national event. So I know. We can tap into the day that it is nationally uh, happening across our land. Yeah, for sure. But okay. Speaking of hike for hospice, we have just ordered a street banner. It's going to be across Main Street to promote the hike. And it just says the first Sunday in May, and it's got um, the website, and so they can go on the website to get further information. Is that going in Asuias? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you're going to have to fight with the market on Main, who are opening I've that weekend. <laughs> I've already got my dates booked. <laughs> well, market on Main may already have it too, so you'll just have to check with Public Works because they've got, got dates. Okay, fair enough. Well. Good, you got it in before they did. Okay. <laughs> Um, Councilman Youngberg, did you have a question? Uh, yes. Thank you for a great presentation. I've been to your facility and been to a couple of fundraisers, and uh, it's so important to our community and so mm -hmm. glad that it uh, actually developed. It was um, a little bit of hard work on behalf of your mm -hmm. whole organization. But uh, your fundraisers, do you have any other fundraisers planned other than the uh, donation appeal that you make? We, we have two major fundraisers each year. One is the Hike for Hospice in the spring, and then we have our Caring Hands event in November, mm -hmm. uh, which is held at the Frank Renables Auditorium. And, uh, all right. Of, mm -hmm. uh, those are our two major fundraisers, and then we, uh, we have different donations that come in and different support that we receive uh, throughout <coughs> the year, but just the two major fundraisers. Mm -hmm. Great. And we have appreciated the support. We've seen you at some of those events, and that makes mm -hmm. a huge difference. It makes a statement to our community about what it means to work together mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to make this a great place to live. So we are very grateful for your, for your support and for your time this morning. Thank you. Well, thank and you. thank you very much, too, for, for coming. And I'm sure that you have been invited to the uh, volunteer luncheon. Has somebody from your organization been invited to that? Good, um, because you can certainly come to that. We absolutely appreciate uh, all volunteers in this community, and we have a luncheon, which I believe is on the 22nd. So um, please attend that, because we like to honour everybody in the community that volunteers their time and their efforts. And in the same vein, you have all been invited to the Mayor's Prayer Breakfast that's coming up. Uh, the day before. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate your support, yeah. and that really is an opportunity celebrate what we do together. So sure. We'll, we'll, we'll be part of that as well. well, and thank you very much to both thank of you. you for coming. We do appreciate it. Okay. Just give them to Brianne. Oh. Brianne will take care of them. Um, thank you very much. And I don't think we have anything else on the agenda, so we will move that the meeting be adjourned. Thank Good you. Morning. Councillor Campbell, Councillor King, all in favour. It will take five minutes, two minutes.